Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I would like to invite you to listen, watch, and be serious in our Beya Sunday School every 9.30 in the morning on our Beya Facebook page and YouTube channel. It is important that you will be able to listen to relevant lessons that will be brought to you by our Sunday School teacher, Dean Ramsey Colorado, a retired certified public accountant and a former dean of the College of Accountancy in the University of the Cordilleras. He is a Baguio First Sunday School teacher for many years. Our Sunday School material is the NIV Standard Lesson Commentary from the U.S. The material was prepared by theologians and experts in the field of Christian theology. They carefully prepared the lessons and scrutinized its parts with the guidance of our Lord Jesus. Our Sunday School teacher makes sure that our lessons are in context and followed our doctrines. This is free and everyone can access it. This is for you and your local church use. Together, let us study and learn more about the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School. November 12, 2023. Lesson number 11 of the first quarter. Freedom to love. Kalayaan na naumibig. Background scripture. Romans chapter 13 and 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The Sunday School material that we are using is the Standard Lesson Commentary, 2023-2024. Let's start with a prayer. Lord, we will be studying the lesson from the letter of Paul with regards to love as a trait of every Christian. We pray, Lord, for your guidance. We pray that you will help us understand your message for us through this lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, this is a year at a glance. This is a one-year curriculum. We are in the first quarter. God's law is love. For the months of September, October, November, second quarter, the theme will be faith that pleases God, December, January, February, third quarter, the theme examining our faith, March, April, May, fourth quarter, hope in the Lord, June, July, and August. The quarter is divided into three units. We are in the Unit 3, second lesson of Unit 3. Unit 3 is Christ frees law and slaves. Quarter at a glance. So last, last Sunday, we have taken up lesson number 10. And we took up conflict regarding circumcision in the role of of the law of Moses. So we learned from there that it is not through the obedience to the law of Moses, including circumcision, that a man is saved, but it is by the grace of God through faith. And uh, And there we learn the question, the answer to the question, did Gentiles have to adhere to the law to become part of the people of God? And Peter answered, no. It is true faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we will look at lesson number 11. Paul never condoned ungodly behavior. 
Galit si Paul sa mga ungodly behavior. Christian liberty is not a license for sin. Instead, believers' display of love to others fulfills the requirement of the law. Ang isang kristyano na umiibig sa kanyang kapwa ay nakatupad na. Tinutupad niya ang lahat ng requirements ng batas. At ito yung batas ni Moses. And then in the latter lessons, we will see exhibiting personal freedom may cause weaker Christians to stumble. Katulad na yan sa mga pagkain. Kung uh, hindi komportable yung iba sa iyong ginagawa, although alam mo naman na tama ito, huwag mong gawin. So, we go through the scripture in English and Tagalog. Later on, we go back and analyze this verse by verse. Maybe phrase by phrase, sometimes word for word. Romans 13.8 Let no debt remaining outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. In 1 Corinthians 13, 8-13, Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Sa Tagalog, Romans 13, Huwag kayong magkaroon ng sagutin kanino man. Liban sa saguting tayo'y mag-ibigan sapagkat ang umiibig sa kapwa ay nakatutupad sa kautusan. Ang mga utos gaya ng huwag kang mga ngalunya, huwag kang papatay, huwag kang magnanakaw, huwag kang mag-iimbot, at ang alinmang utos na tulad ng mga ito ay nabubuo sa ginitong pangusap. Ibigin mo ang iyong kapwa gaya ng iyong sarili. Ang umiibig ay hindi gumagawa ng masama kanino man, kaya't ang pag-ibig ang kabuuan ng kautusan. Sa 1 Corinthians 8, matatapos ang kakayahang magpahayang ng salita ng Diyos, titigil ang kakayahang magsalita sa iba't <coughs> Iba't ibang wika. Mawawala ang kalaman, ngunit ang pag-ibig ay walang katapusan. Hindi pa lubos ang ating kalaman at ang kakayahan sa pagpapahayag ng salita ng Diyos. Ngunit, pagdating ng ganap, mawawala ang di ganap. Noong ako'y bata pa, 
nagsasalita ako, nag-iisip at nangangat, nangangatwirang tulad ng bata. Ngayong ako'y meron ng sapat na gulang, iniwan ko na ang mga hasal bata. Sa kasalukuyan, tila malabong larawan ang nakikita natin sa salamin, ngunit darating ang araw na makikita natin siya ng mukhaan. Bagagya lamang ang nalalaman ko ngayon. Ngunit darating ang araw na malulubos ang kalamang ito tulad ng pagkakilala sa akin ng Diyos. Ang tatlong ito'y nananatili, ang pananampalataya, pag-asa at pag-ibig. Ngunit ang pinakadakila sa mga ito ay ang pag-ibig. Key verse is Romans 13.9. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Ano ang dapat nating matutunan dito sa pag-aaral na to? Identify the greatest of the three things that remain or abide. Ano ba yung tatlo na nanatili? Na nanatili at Uh, yun yung nag, uh, nag, uh, na sa atin, sa ating buhay kristyano. Summarize why it is the greatest of the three. Bakit kaya? Bakit uh, ang pag-ibig ang pinaka, pinaka higit sa lahat sa tatlong ito? Commit to making that fact a personal reality in our specific way. Ito yung challenge ba, bawat isa sa atin. Gawin nating totoo sa ating buhay na itong sinasabing pag-ibig sa ating kapwa. Paano natin isa sa buhay bawat isa sa atin. Lesson outline. So may kwento. Life under law. Life under law. Then we have lesson context from uh, lesson context yung sa Romans, lesson context yung sa 1 Corinthians. Then we have the analysis, love and the law, Romans 13:8 to 10. Yung analysis ng Romans 13:8 to 10, love and the law. Then love and its spiritual gifts, analysis ng 1 Corinthians 13, to 13. The clarity of love. Conclusion. Okay, ito yung kwento. Introduction. Life under law and love. Yan. Yung isang, merong isang babae, nag-asawa siya, at nakapangasawa siya ng lalaki na almost impossible to live with. Yan. Mukhang napakahirap na kasama yung kanyang napangasawa. He became very demanding, insisting that his meals be served at exactly the same time every day, prepared according to his specifications. Yeah, napakalupit. Talagang kinakailangan masunod ang mga sinasabi niya. Ang damit niya, dapat eh, ayos ang pagkakaplansya. Ang kwarto, talagang is spotlessly clean. Sobrang linis. At dapat ang lahat ng ito ay masunod to the letter. If any of his high standards were not met, he is torn off in rage. Yan. Kapag ka hindi nagawa, nag, uh, nagsisisigaw, pinagagalitan niya ang, kasa, ang kanyang asawa, sinisigawan. So yung buhay ng babaeng ito, may asawa ay naging miserable kawawa after about three years the husband passed away unexpectedly ay namatay hindi alam kung bakit namatay yung asawa so nakapag-asawa uli itong babae but this time yung napangasawa niya ay a caring Christian man complete opposite of her first husband wow yun yung pangalawang asawa niya ha complete opposite at siya ay masayang masaya and she wanted to do all she could 
to show her gratitude. Yan. Dito ngayon ang kanyang buhay. And then, narealize niya isang araw yung mga ginagawa niya at pareho doon sa ginagawa niya doon sa kanyang unang asawa. It was the same. Ah, ginagawa niya lang. Only this time, with her second advance, she was doing them out of love. Yan. Pareho na na-realize niya. Pareho pa lang ginagawa ko. Kaya lang, nung una, eh, ginagawa ko yun dahil yun yung batas na pinapataw sa kanya. Pero ngayon, ginagawa niya dahil sa pag-ibig. A person who lives primarily by law and a person who lives primarily by love both live obedient lives. Pareho. Pareho yung obedience ito. Obedience. Obedience doon sa law. Obedience dahil sa pag-ibig. Pareho sila nang ginagawa. Kaya lang, sabi dyan, yung isa ay more satisfying. Mas masarap yung buhay doon sa isa. Dahil meron kang satisfaction sa ginagawa. Hindi dahil sa takot. And this is the lesson for today. Thus far the quarter we have studied two lessons from Romans. Yan. Yung lessons natin. Lessons number five and lesson number six. Yan. Ano yung pinag-aralan natin doon? This is about doctrinal. Doctrinal. What we are to believe. Yun yung, yung pinag-aralan natin. So, lesson five says, doctrinal. What to believe. Pero ngayon, today's lesson moves to a section of more practical what we are to do. Chapter 12. Okay, lesson, context, Romans. Dun sa Romans. Chapter 12 begins this section by challenging readers to offer themselves as a living sacrifice. Yung verse, verse 1. What follows describe what kind of life should look like in Christian's daily conduct. What kind of life should a life should look like in a Christian's daily conduct? Ano ba? Living sacrifice. Ano ba? Paano ba? Ano ba talaga ang buhay ng isang Kristiyano? Ano ba itsura ng buhay Kristiyano? So yung first part ng Romans, chapter 12, uh, Romans chapter 13, yung first part, verse Uh, yung sev- first, uh, seven verses. The first seven verses is talking about our attitude toward civic authorities. Yun yung mga dapat pagsunod sa mga tao sa gobyerno. The key concept here is one of obligation. What is our obligation to the government? Yan. But Paul uses make a transition from how we are to relate to how we are to relate to one another. Kanina, doon sa first part ng, ng uh, chapter na to, it is obligation to the government. Now, it is an obligation to one another. Lesson context, 1 Corinthians. Okay, tingnan naman natin yung lesson context ng uh, 1 Corinthians 13. The second of the two segments. Paul's timeless and massless explanation of Christian love. Ipinaliliwanag naman ngayon ni Paul yung Christian love. The larger context of this chapter is Paul's discussion is in 12 to 14, in chapters 12 to 14. Possession and use of spiritual gifts had become a source of great contention yan doon sa doon sa church of Corinth medyo eh, nagkakainitan sila ron yung pinag-uusapan yung mga spiritual gifts and it is a source of contention doon sa kanila within the Corinthian church Paul was concerned that undue focus on these gifts could distract the Corinthian believers from more crucial concern nawawala yung totoong dapat na uh, focus dahil dito sa pagtatalo, dahil nagkakainitan doon sa mga spiritual gifts. Should that happen, the result would be a fracturing of the unity in Christ. That is, a characterize, that is to characterize followers of Jesus. Eh, pagka nangyari yun, sabi niya, masisira yung ating samahan 
sa pangalan ni Jesus. Now let's go to the verse. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. The Greek verb translated here as debt is reflection of the same word yeah, debt in the physical sense. Ibig sabihin, debt you owe. It is own obligation. Obligation. The object of the obligation has changed from civic authorities to one another. Dati, obligation sa gobyerno ngayon ay obligation na sa bawat isa. The first part of this verse is certainly an approval of honoring one's commitments, be they in terms of money, property. Uh, i-honor mo yung obligasyon mo. The praising sets up a contrast with the second part regarding what should be, what should never be considered, what should never be paid off. Ay, yung second part niya, ay, ano ba yung obligasyon na hindi matapos-tapos? Ano yon? Obligation to love. Walang katapusan. Yung obligation uh, with regards to yung utang, may katapusan yan. Pero ito, itong second part, the obligation to love is never paid off. Love among fellow believers is to be a primary characteristics of Christians. Yan dapat habang buhay dito sa lupa hanggang doon sa langit ay kailangan niyang pag-ibig. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Ito ngayon. What Paul says here stresses in terms uh, ang mangyari binanggit din ito ni Paul doon sa Galatians. Pero mas, ma, mas matindi yung pagkakasabi niya. The entire law is fulfilled by loving your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. The, the entire law, the more than 600 laws and rules and regulations of law of Moses is fulfilled by loving your neighbor as yourself. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall covet, and others are summed up in one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, so alam natin yan, nasa ng Ten Commandments. Di dun sa Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy chapter 5. Now, the positive command to love is framed in terms of several You shall not negative commands. Ka, makikita natin, di ba? Yung, yung command, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, you shall not, you shall not, you shall not. Now, the positive command for all of this is love your neighbor as yourself. This implies that a foundation of neighbor love is a commitment to do no harm. Thou shalt not, that is, don't, don't, don't harm. Pero, therefore, neighbor, neighbor love means You don't do any harm to your neighbor. But Christian love is not simply refusing to hurt. Kaya lang sabi niya, Christian love, eh, hindi lang yung basta hindi mo nga siya sasaktan. Pero it is also an active. It is also active as it was for the good of others. May merong continuation, hindi lang yung basta wag, 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 wag. But rather, we commit ourselves to such love, we will define neighbor love by meeting the needs of those who we encounter. Yun yung positive, yun yung may plus. How? How will you show your love not by hurting, not only by not hurting them, but by looking at what they need. Meeting the needs of those we encounter. Such love fulfills what Jesus called the second of the greatest commands, which is all the law and the prophets have. This is the royal law found in Scripture. The abridged version of the law. <laughs> abridged. Pinaigli. Nabatas. Ito yung kwento. Sabi niya rito, eh, nung nag-aaral siya, Geometry, 
Eh, sabi niya, napakahirap nitong geometry dahil pagkatapos mong isolve, kinakailangan mo pang ipaliwanag ano yung mga principles, etc., etc., na nakapaloob doon sa solution mo. Eh, kaya lang sabi niya, yung problema ko sa geometry, eh, wala yan sa comparison dito sa expectation to the law of Moses. Bakit? Mangyari, the body of law of Moses features over 600 rules. Pero pinaigli na ito ni Jesus. Ano yon? By this positive command, love your neighbor as yourself. And by this you have fulfilled all the law of Moses. Love does not harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Even so, we can add to the vision that Jesus himself came to fulfill the law. He did so in his love for sinful humanity by taking on the Old Testament rules. Yan. Ito'y pinakita ni Jesus ano ba ang pag, paano pinakita ni Jesus ang kanyang pag-ibig sa pamamagitan ng kanyang mga roles. Ano yung mga roles na yun? Siya ay isang propeta, siya ay isang priest, at siya ay hari. He has established the new covenant and he established the new covenant. The new covenant. The old covenant, this was, was with Abraham and the new covenant, the new covenant through the Lord Jesus Christ. He fulfilled the law by keeping it perfectly. He, he had no sin. One of the requirements of the law is that he should be a punishment for sin. And he did that. He, well, siya na umako sa lahat ng kasalanan doon sa cross. And He is a perfect sacrifice because He is sinless. And there is no greater example of neighbor love than, well, dying for the people you love. Love never fails. But where uh, there is There are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Love never fails. Yung mga prophecy, matatapos yan. Yung mga speaking in tongues, titigil yan. Yung ating knowledge, it will pass away. So, love is to be given priority in practice because it possesses much greater staying power. Yan. Yan, yan. Hindi mawawala. Staying power. As compared to the other spiritual giftedness. Now, love never fails in the sense of expiring or becoming unnecessary. Hindi mawawala yung, yung relevance ng pag-ibig. Hindi mag expire hindi matatapos ang pag-ibig. By contrast, the time will come when the three gifts mentioned, prophecies, tongues, and knowledge are no longer in use. Yan. Itong mga prophecies, eh, nangyari na eh. It was a prophecy, eh, nangyari na eh. Dumating na si Kristo. Nangyari na. Yung mga sinasabi, nangyari na, dumating na si Kristo. Yung nalalaman natin, which is part, eh, ito na buo na ang kalaman natin. Therefore, wala nang gamit. It's no do, wala nang gamit. These gifts were rather public. Uh, ito pang isa. Itong mga, itong mga gifts na to, prophecy, tongues, knowledge, these are in public. They're public in nature. Therefore, it tends to draw more attention to themselves. Eh, baka kaya minsan lumalaki ang ulo because these are public in nature. Whether, whether that was their motivation or not, maaaring hindi sinasadya, baka man naman sinasadya. Yet, as impressive as these gifts were, their impact was significantly lessened if the person exercised did not do so out of love. Ayan, eh, kinakailangan eh. Kung itong mga gifts na to ay ginagawa ito hindi dahil sa pag-ibig ay eh, nawawalan ito ng 
significance. Yeah. So, yung mahaba, 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or clanging symbol. If I have gift of prophecy and so on. The issue is, if, if there is no love, if it is not out of love, its significance is lessened. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. Now, there will be a discussion of this word part and completeness. These two verses begins a deeper dive in examining why spiritual gifts are of lesser value than the parity to love. Bakit kaya? Bakit kaya mas mababa ang halaga nito kaysa yung pag-ibig? The relative valuation are seen in the contrast between the praises in part and completeness. Diyan makikita natin. Ito yon. Pero hindi nagkakaisa kung anong ibig sabihin nito. So, tignan natin yung mga kaisipan. One proposal is to see that contrast in terms of things that are temporary versus completeness. It could be perfect. Another possible translation of completeness is perfect. Things that are enduring as a passage of time eventually reveal, reveals. Okay, so yung another proposal. Yung another proposal. It could contrast Incomplete in contest versus complete. Yan naman yung isa. Yung isa ay incomplete because part versus yung other part na complete. Given the partial nature of the things that individuals may know and prophesy, eh, siyempre, eh, hindi talaga alam lahat. Kaya nga pinoprophesy, pero part lang ang pinoprophesy. Yung part lang. The proposed interpretation is that the term of what is part refers to the completion of the New Testament. So, where is the completion of this part? Konti lang ang nalalaman, konti lang ang napoprophesy, etc. Et where is the completion of all this? This is the, you can find the completion in the New Testament, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and eventually, of course, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, the proposal is that Certain spiritual gifts were no longer necessary after the first century. After the exercise of those gifts had authenticated the new and perfect revelation of God's will within the new covenant. Okay, so, pirinopisay. Pirinopisay of the coming of the Messiah. Dumating na ang Messiah. The revelation of God's will is there. And now, the Lord Jesus Christ has initiated or in the new covenant through the Lord Jesus Christ is there. Wala na ngayong gamit yung prophecy na yung mangyari, nangyari na. Nangyari na. The word translated complete this year also called mean mature. Ah, ito naman. Another possible interpretation of completeness is mature. That idea is present in 1 Corinthians where the same Greek word is used to contrast the immaturity of children with the maturity of adults. Ah, you know pala. Pwede rin na yung completeness doon ay it could also mean maturity. Hindi na tayo nag-iisip na parang bata, kundi nag-iisip na tayo na isang adults, ng isang nakakaintindi, na mayroon ng knowledge, mayroon ng wisdom, and now we are talking of righteousness. This leads to a viewpoint that Paul is referring to life in the world to come after Jesus returns. Yan, ito ngayon. What will be the picture when Jesus returns? This will be a viewpoint of Paul. The completeness, the perfect uh, setting. What will be the setting? The coming, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. What could be more perfect than that? When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Yeah. 
clearly there is a sense in which we are to remain childlike. Yan yung first part yan, eh tama naman na childlike tayo in our dependence and trust in the Lord. Dapat dapat complete ang ating trust doon at dependence doon sa Panginoon. Doon pumapasok yung tama yung childlike that we cannot do anything on our own. Therefore, we entrust everything to the Lord Jesus Christ. But remaining childish in terms of spiritual maturity is condemned. Yan. Sinasabi, kung ayaw mo in terms of spiritual maturity, ayaw mong lumago, ang sabi dyan ay, you are condemned. Nakakaya at hindi katanggap-tanggap. Let us read Hebrew 5. Hebrew 5, 12. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers. Yan. Sabi niya, dapat sa panahon ito ay mga teacher na kayo. Teacher na kayo ng gospel. Teacher na kayo. Bible teachers na. You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word. Hanggang ngayon, kinakailangan nyo pa ng iba para ituro sa inyo yung basic truth, the elementary truth of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. Dapat umangat naman ang ating kalaman. Hindi pwedeng pang kindergarten level na lamang. Dapat we should be talking about how to express righteousness in our daily life. We take on new responsibilities and interests. Mayroon ta, mayroon nang mga new responsibilities and interest and put aside the childish things that once consumed much of our time and attention. Verse 12, For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Yan. Ano pa paano ipapaliwanag ito? Eh, nung panahon, wala pa yung mirror katulad ng glass mirror natin. Anong ginagamit na mirror? Polished metal. Ibig sabihin, nakikinig mo, pero madilim. It is a distorted reflection. There are two major lines of interpretation. One line understands fully to be taken in a literal sense as face-to-face. Fully, face-to-face with the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, completeness. And therefore, it is referring to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ when we will see Him face to face. The other interpretation of fully, uh, yung pangalawang interpretation of fully doon ay it could be in a figurative sense a clear communication with God. You know another term. This is to support the idea of completion of the New Testament as God's definitive way of communicating His will as we mature in the faith. Ano yun? So therefore, the New Testament The New Testament is the way of communicating His will as we mature in the faith. Nalaman natin ang kabuuan ng plano ng Diyos. Nasaan? Nasa New Testament. And now these three remain faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of this is love. As Paul brings his discussion of Christian love to his conclusion, He emphasized once more that which remain endures in an implied contrast to that which is temporary. Ano yung mananatili at nandyan hanggang hanggang walang katapusan at ano yung mga, yung mga temporary lang matatapos. Faith, hope, and love for my trial that sums up the crucial elements that are at the heart of Christian living. Dapat yan ang nakikita sa buhay kristyano, faith, hope, and love. Love is not only greater than spiritual gift, but it is the greatest of Christian values. 
Pag-usapan natin yung faith. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. Yan ang faith. Assurance of what we do not see. Confidence in what we hope for. Faith will no longer be necessary when Christ returns. Ano yung hope po? That of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, that He will be, He will announce who will go to heaven with Him, etc., etc. Eh, nangyari na. Hindi mo na kailangan yung faith. In heaven, we will be walking by sight rather than by faith. We will be there hand in hand with the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no need for faith anymore. Let's talk about hope. Hope too is limited to our earthly lives only. Na habang nandito tayo sa lupa, then we talk about hope. What is that? We hope for the eternal salvation. So, if the eternal salvation is there, then hope does not have relevancy anymore. Once we have it in its full sense, there is no more place for hope. After all, no one hopes for something that he or she already has. Eh, naandun ka na. <coughs> you, uh, you hope for eternal salvation and you are already there. So therefore, hope does not have relevancy anymore. But love, however, towers over both faith and hope because love is eternally enduring. Love is primarily attribute of God. For our part, this is love, that we walk in obedience to His commands. What the Corinthians needed more than any in resolving conflict over spiritual gift was the attitude of Christian love. Yan ang sinasabi ni Paul. Ano bang kailangan ng mga Corinthians para ma-resolve itong kanilang conflict? Conflict about spiritual gift. Eh, dapat magkaroon sila ng pag-ibig. Christian love. Love would move followers of Jesus, whether 1st century or 21st century. Ito ay relevant, relevant noong panahon ni na Pablo, relevant ngayong panahon natin. Eh, it should be, we should go beyond immaturity. Ano yung, ano yung immaturity? Me first. <laughs> Me first attitude towards genuine Christ-likeness. When? We talk about Christ-likeness, it will be others first. Others first. Loving attitudes and actions are to characterize Christians. So, yan ang karakteristik ng isang Kristiyano. Loving attitudes and actions. A quote attributed to U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt, 1858, 1919, is most appropriate. No one cares how much you know. Until they know how much you care. Walang pakialam yung iba kung uh, anong nalalaman mo hanggang malaman nila na ikaw ay mapa, may pakialam sa kanila. Conclusion. Clarity of love. Ito yung kwento. I started wearing glass in my seventh grade. Eh, grade seven pa lang siya. Nagtasalamin na siya. Minsan sinabi sa kanya ng teacher, dahil nakita niya kung paano nahirap, nahirap siya mag, magbasa. Basahin yung nasa blackboard. Magpatingin siya sa isang doktor, optometrist. So, nagpakitingin na. At totoo, kailangan nga niya ng salamin. And then, sabi niya, sabi nung bago niya isuot yung salamin, sabi niya, bago mo isuot, tingnan mo muna yung yung kalsada. So, ano nakikita mo? Okay. Tapos, okay, suot mo na itong salamin at tingnan mo yung nasa kalsada. I could not believe how much clearer everything looked. Yan, nung makita niya, wow, mas maliwanag. Nung walang salamin, mas maliwanag na nung may salamin niya. The actions and attitudes of Christian love improve our spiritual view in critical areas. Kung may Christian love, yung ating attitude, yung ating action ay mag improve From spiritual view, spiritual view, pananaw ng isang Kristiyano. Without it, we are somewhat like the man in the village of Bethsaida to whom Jesus gave 
aside in two stages miracle. Meron yan eh. Nung una, pinakita, meron pinagagaling si Jesus. First, stage one. At ang tingin niya sa mga tao ay, I see, ano nakikita mo? I see men as trees walking. <laughs> Parang mga, mga kahoy, punong kahoy na naglalakad. Yung stage two, ginamotuli siya ni Jesus. Ano ngayon nakikita mo? Ah, sabi niya, wow, nakikita ko na ang totoo. Neither is Jesus content that our spiritual vision remain partially obscured regarding whom we should or should not extend his life through our own attitude. Gusto ni Jesus, malinaw ang ating spiritual vision. The process can be seen as two mutually reinforcing upward spiraling reciprocals. Sabi niya, parang dalawang dalawang uh, re- force to mutually reinforcing uh, is reciprocal. Dalawa na nagtutulungan para mapabuti. First, as the clarity of our spiritual vision improves, we will begin to see more and more opportunities to express the love of Christ to others. Ang gumaganda ang ating spiritual vision, dumadami ang nakikita nating opportunity para ipakita ang pag-ibig ni Jesus. At habang pinapakita natin ang pag-ibig ni Jesus, lalong nagiging maliwanag ang spiritual vision natin. Second, this improved vision will cause us to see that to minister to others is to serve God. Ah, sabi niya, kung ginagawa natin ito, gumaganda ang ating paglilingkod, lalo natin nakikita na ito ay ginagawa natin dahil sa ating paglilingkod sa Diyos. Ang paglilingkod sa kapwa, lalo nating nakikita na ito ay paglilingkod sa Diyos. But whoever loves God is known by God. Because of Christ's love, we do not view people as the world does. We see them as those for whom Jesus gave His life and who need the message of reconciliation. Yung spiritual vision ay nagbibigay sa atin ng pagtingin, iba sa pagtingin ng mga rebellious na tao. Nakikita natin ang mga tao na doon sila ay mga tao kung bakit na napako si Jesus sa krus. The same love moves us to respond to those in need. The kind of neighbor love modeled by the good Samaritan. Love remains the primary form of ID for the follower of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this lesson. Thank you for telling us that we have to improve our spiritual vision by continuing to love our neighbor. And as we do this, we will improve our understanding that we are all doing this because of our love of the two of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that you will help each and every one of us to live a life relevant of this lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last slide is about our lesson for next Sunday, lesson number 12, Freedom from the World. Magandang umaga po at pagpalain kayo ng Diyos. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I would like to invite you to listen, watch, and be serious in our Beya Sunday School every 9.30 in the morning on our Beya Facebook page and YouTube channel. It is important that you will be able to listen to relevant lessons that will be brought to you by our Sunday School teacher, Dean Ramsey Colorado, a retired certified public accountant and a former dean of the College of Accountancy in the University of the Cordilleras. He is a Baguio First Sunday School teacher for many years. Our Sunday School material is the NIV Standard Lesson Commentary from the U.S. The material was prepared by theologians and experts in the field of Christian theology. 
They carefully prepared the lessons and scrutinized its parts with the guidance of our Lord Jesus. Our Sunday school teacher makes sure that our lessons are in context and followed our doctrines. This is free and everyone can access it. This is for you and your local church use. Together, let us study and learn more about the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you all.